Hey everyone, Itay Manero here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a comic page start to finish, including how to do the panels the easy way, how to pencil, ink and color, and how to do all the lettering, comic balloons and sound effects using Procreate. So let's jump right into it. In order to achieve this, I'm going to be using some of my brush sets for Procreate. In the first place I will show you how to use my comic panels, balloons and sound effects toolkit to do the comic panels. Then I'll use various brushes from the comic book artist brush set to pencil and ink the page. Later I will use my paint and chill brush set to give it full color. And finally I'll use the comic panels, balloons and sound effects toolkit again to finish up the page by doing the lettering. Just a reminder that along with the full version for each of these tools, you have a free mini version available on my Gumroad page, so that everyone can try them out. You can find the links in the description below. Now the first thing I needed before jumping into working on this tutorial was a comic script. Because I wanted to work on a script that would allow me to showcase a wide range of uses for my tools in a single page, I reached to my friend El Torres, who is a professional and incredible comic book writer. If you live in Spain and you have been a comic book fan for the last couple of decades, you probably already know who he is. If you live in other parts of the world, some of these amazing titles may be familiar to you. If you don't know him and his work, I'm going to leave some links in the description below, so make sure to check those out. The cool thing is that this handsome man said yes to my request, and in a couple of days he sent me this fantastic script, ready to be developed as a full comic page. I'm going to leave the script on screen for a moment, so you can pause the video to read it in full if you want. Also a quick note, this is not a detailed video on how my comic tools work. It is more of a how to use them in a hypothetical real scenario kind of video. If you want to know step by step how to use these tools, I have a full in-depth tutorial where I walk you through everything you need to know. You can find the link in the description of this video or right here in the top right corner. First I'm going to use my comic panel brushes to create the margins of my page and divide it into the different panels the script is describing. Because I've already read it, I know I'm going to need 6 panels. Once I have that, I switch to my little humanoid pencil brush from the comic book artist brush set. With this brush I'm going to sketch and pencil the whole page using blue. I like penciling my comics with blue because later it would be easier for me to see my black lines over the pencil when I'm inking. Now what I'm doing is sketching the whole page panel by panel, following what the script says and trying to represent it as best as I can, especially when it comes to the narrative of the events things like looking up for references for the first panel to make sure that the city looks like the New Orleans skyline are very important. Also paying attention to how the sequence in the second and third rows of panels develops so that the action is clear and interesting. Whatever I do during this penciling stage is not set on stone, and for example you will see that I will swipe the last panel horizontally a few times during this whole video, to see what convinces me the most. It is important for the last panel to be as impactful as I can, since it is the reveal of these kids that transform into monsters. I don't like to detail anything too much during the sketching stage, because I personally like to leave room for improvisation during the inking stage. But for example, things like the expression in the cop's face, I feel that are important to be defined as much as possible from the beginning. Now it is time to ink the page, and for that purpose I'm using my Ink Plus Texture Brush from the Comic Book Artist Brush Set. This brush is super responsive and versatile, and I love it for inking comics. During this process I'm paying attention at the weight of my lines, trying to make them interesting by varying the thickness using pressure with the Apple Pencil. I 
I'm also playing with masses of black and areas of pure white, to establish an interesting contrast that works well with the horror theme of the comic. From now on it is just a matter of finish defining the page, with interesting line work. you'll see that at one point, I wanted to pay homage to my friend El Torres by adding a graffiti in one of the walls with his name.
Overall, I have to say that I had a lot of fun working on this comic page. It's been a while since I worked on something like this, and it was a good feeling going back to making comics for a moment. El Torres is an incredibly talented horror writer, and during this whole process I was hoping that I was able to do justice to his script. Definitely drawing those monsters in the last panel was extremely fun and awesome. As for the color of the page, I'm going to be using one single brush from my paint and chill brush set for Procreate. The name of the brush is Croco, and I absolutely love it. It has an amazing texture to it that I just don't know how to describe. You need to try it by yourself to know what I mean. By the way, this brush comes with the free version of the set, so feel free to download it and let me know what you think. As for my coloring technique, I'm relaying on the selection tool to slowly selecting area by area and coloring them with my brush. This way it is very easy to separate different parts of the illustrations and avoid painting outside the desired areas. For the color palette I wanted to work mainly with purples and blues, so that the city looks dark and it is clear that it is night time. I thought this would work great in contrast with the different lights that are all around the page, like the ones from the city, the police car, and the flashlight the cop is holding. I also wanted to have a contrast in the last two panels, by making the backgrounds red and yellow from the warmth of the flashlight pointing at the monster kids. I personally like to work the color for the backgrounds first, and I leave the characters for last. This allows me to establish the lighting for the different scenes first, and when I get to the part where I'm coloring the characters, it is easier for me to imagine how that lighting is going to affect them.
Now it is time to do the lettering, and for that purpose I place a layer filled with white on top of everything else, and I lower the opacity a little bit. This allows me to place the multiple texts over the page, and be able to see them properly over the drawings. The first thing I'm doing is choosing my font, and setting up the size and spacing to whatever feels right to me. I'm using a font called Jack Armstrong, that comes by default with Procreate and it is perfect for lettering comics. Once I have the first text for the caption in the first panel, I can duplicate the text layer and simply modify the text. This is great because it will retain all the parameters from the previous text, so that I don't need to set them up every time. Now it is just a matter of adding all the different texts from the script, and making sure that they fit in the right places for each panel. I'm also taking enough time with each text to make sure that the shape of the block of text is the most optimal, to fit inside the speech bubbles that I will add later. Now I'm adding the comic balloons from my ultimate dynamic comic panels, balloons and sound effects toolkit for Procreate. Notice how I'm choosing different types of balloons depending on the type of context for each text. So for example the first text is a box, because it is a caption mentioning the place where the action is happening. Other balloons are shaped to show that the character is speaking through her police radio. There's other balloons that indicate that the character is thinking what the text is saying, and other balloons show that the characters are screaming. There is a huge variety of different types of balloons in this toolkit, so feel free to explore all of its possibilities. If you are wondering, I'm doing all the balloons in a single layer because it's easier and faster for me to work this way, especially when the time comes to add the different tails, pointing from each balloon to the character that is speaking in each panel. As you can see I'm also choosing different types of tails, depending on if the character is speaking normally, or if it is a thought bubble. Lastly I'm adding the couple of sound effects that are mentioned in the script, and for this I'm using a couple of brushes from the toolkit, that will allow me to manually draw those sound effects, by choosing a color fill and an outline color. And this is the final result. I really hope you liked this video, again thank you so much to my friend El Torres for doing this little collaboration with me, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you use my brushes and post your art on social media, feel free to use the hashtag Manero brushes so that I can see what you create. I will be extremely happy to share your creations with my audience. Don't forget to subscribe for more art related videos, and give me a thumbs up. Also, make sure to check out my Gumroad page, where you will find the ultimate dynamic comic balloons and sound effects toolkit for Procreate, and all my other sets that I have available, I'm sure something will suit your artistic needs. All the links are in the description below. Okay, thank you for watching, see you next time.